When somebody loses their job, there's so many questions about whether or not the loss of that job was wrongful or illegal. So many people have questions about what is wrongful termination and whether or not they can sue if they've been fired. And, um, you know, it, it takes somebody with skill, somebody who has uh, the experience and the knowledge to help that person understand, hey, you know, from the time you got fired through the legal process to ultimately getting a recovery, how does that look? What's that like? And, um, you know, we, we enjoy the process of sharing that information with people and helping them navigate uh, the complicated area of wrongful termination. Is an unfair termination the same thing as a wrongful termination? Okay, so here's what's important to know. Every wrongful termination, every single one of them was unfair, right? Because if you've been terminated in violation of the law, that's definitely unfair. But, but not every unfair termination is a wrongful termination. Let me repeat that. Every wrongful termination is unfair because they broke the law but not every unfair termination is a violation of the law or a wrongful termination. Like, for instance, uh, they may have a bona fide reason why they needed to fire people. The very process of seniority, for instance, is unfair to some people. So just because something is unfair or seems unfair does not mean that it was illegal. In business, unfair decisions have to be made. It will happen if they have to close a, a plant. Uh, the people who work in that plant will not fear, feel that it was fair to close the plant. All right, so unfairness doesn't mean it's illegal, but every illegal termination is unfair. Okay, so what does it mean in a legal sense for a termination to be a wrongful termination? Under the law, a termination becomes wrongful if there is a law that says that those reasons for the termination, that those cannot be reasons. For instance, if you're firing somebody because they're Jewish, there is a law that specifically says in the government code, you can't fire somebody because they're Jewish or because they're a woman or because of their sexual orientation, or their disability, their age. There are lots of protected categories, or that they blew the whistle. You can't, there are laws, if there's a law that says you can't do it, and then they do it, that's what makes the, that, that's what makes the termination wrongful, okay? If they were mistaken, uh, that's not a violation of the law to be mistaken. Maybe you lost your job because they thought they would not have enough revenue to pay for your position, so they eliminated the position. But then it turned out they did have enough revenue. They were just mistaken. That mistake is not wrongful because the reason, if it's true that they, that they eliminated the position for finances, if that's true, there's no law that says a business can't run its business. But if the real reason is because of a protected characteristic like gender or any of these other characteristics I've mentioned, well, then it's wrongful. That's a wrongful termination. Just, just change that word wrongful to illegal. And, and it will be a lot more clear in terms of whether this is something you should see a lawyer about. A lot of people, when they get hired uh, in their documents, it says that they're an at-will employee. What does that have to do with this whole wrongful termination business? Well, uh, the definition of at will means that an employer can fire an employee for any reason as long as it's not illegal. Okay, so uh, this, this basically plays into what I just said, that as long as they are not doing it for a reason that is running amok, or running across these lines that prohibit, right? Think of a, these laws as a fence, okay? They're not allowed to cross that fence to fire somebody because they're Jewish or because of their gender or whatever it is. Now, they can fire them for any other reason except the illegal reasons, right? But 
let's think about this in reality, okay? Uh, if an employer is terminating somebody, they're terminating them for a reason. Even though at will says that an employer could terminate somebody for no reason, that is not a reality uh, that anybody exists in. Because uh, even if I put my hand over my eyes and I spin this chair around and then I point and I say, this person is fired, that's a reason. I've given a reason. I, that's my reason. Now, if that actually is the reason, that that's what they did, and that's, there's no other reason, that's how they decided who to fire, that's not, a, that's not a wrongful termination. It's certainly an unfair termination, and uh, certainly a termination that is cold and cruel, but it's not illegal if the only reason that they fired that person is because that was the first person they saw when they, when they opened their eyes. Uh, but the reality is, no company ever says that they spun themselves around in a chair and picked people randomly. Companies decide to end people's employment based on specific reasons. The goal is to understand those reasons, to separate the bogus malarkey from the reality. Nobody ever admits, hey, I fired him because he's black or because he's Jewish or because he's disabled. They never say that. So. Uh, we have to prove, usually by circumstantial evidence, this is evidence that the, the streaks across the sky means that a plane went there. You didn't see the plane, but you see the, 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 the trail that the jet leaves behind. That's the job. We have to investigate and we have to prove what's in these decision makers' minds. What really motivated the termination? And that's how we figure out if it was illegal or just an at-will termination where an employer's exercising their business judgment to try and run their business. What if the employee has a contract with the employer which says they cannot be fired except for good cause? If you're lucky, you have a contract that says an employer needs good cause. And that's lucky because that means that the employer is going to be required to tell you why you're losing your job and it should make sense to you, right? Because if the employer has good cause to end your job, that means that you understand it and you can relate to it. And in, in essence, you, you agree. Yeah, I need to lose my job because of these reasons. So. Uh, you're very fortunate if you are working in a job where the employer can only terminate you for good cause because that means one day, if they don't have good cause, they're going to have to explain that to a jury. What if the employee has a contract for a specific length of time, like one or two years, and they get fired before that you know, contract term has ended? Is that a wrongful termination? Anytime you lose your job, because the decision maker is motivated by a, an idea that is illegal, okay? Whether you have a term of two years and they fire you at one year, 360 days, if the reason that they terminated you is because of one of these protected illegal reasons, then your termination is wrongful. The issue then becomes, if they terminated you at one year, 360 days out of your two year contract, your damages would only be five days of lost work unless everybody at this place of employment gets their contracts automatically renewed. Well, then it doesn't matter that it's for a term. If the other people working there have been there for years and years and years, having their contract regularly renewed, then that's the, that's the reality that we would say we should be analyzing in terms of damages. That uh, had you not been terminated, you would have continued on another contract for two years and then again and again and again, which is the normal way to look at cases where that's the reality of the workplace. What if the employee works for a public entity or has a union? Does at-will employment and this whole wrongful termination thing apply to them? Uh, if you work for a public entity, the same rules in terms of prohibiting 
unlawful terminations apply. So you can't terminate somebody at a public entity for being black any more than you could do it at a private entity. Likewise, if they're reporting illegal conduct, you cannot terminate them any more than you could terminate them at a private entity. Here's the difference though. The public entity employees, they have a much shorter window to present their claims. If you work for a public entity, the magic number is six, six months. If you wait any longer than six months to do something about it, it's very likely that important claims, important rights have been lost. So if you work for a public entity and you think something illegal may have happened to you, it's extremely important to get to a lawyer right away. Don't wait. Go right away and figure out if there's something that could or should be done about the bad thing that has happened to you. And if people work at a private company, what's the statute of limitations for wrongful termination? What's their deadline? If you're working for a private company, uh, you get a little bit more time. And again, a smart lawyer is conservative about these time windows. You don't want to tell somebody they have two years when they might start losing claims sooner than that. So we look at it as the earliest alarm, so to speak. And so we set that clock for one year. So if a bad thing has happened to you at work uh, in January, you're going to have all the way through December of that same year to do something about it. And when we say do something about it, we mean report it, complain to a government agency, complain to your own government agency, or find a lawyer to help you figure out who you're supposed to go to. Uh, whether you're private or you're public, uh, you're going to want to do that within six months for, pri for public entities and one year for private entities. Every employment case involves public policy because we are only able to sue for a wrongful termination or a failure to accommodate or a whistleblowing because of the laws that create those rights. So when a lawyer talks about public policy, all they're saying is public policy is a, 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 a phrase, a fancier phrase for the law. That's it. That's all it means. Public policy is the law. The speed limit, 65. That's a public policy because it's the law. So if your termination is in violation of public policy, it's saying it's in violation of the law. What are the most common examples that you see in your practice of public policy violations? The most common public policy that we see in hundreds of employment cases every year is safety. Safety, safety, safety. People who are reporting unsafe work conditions, people who are reporting unsafe conditions for, for patients, people who are support, uh, reporting unsafe work conditions for coworkers. Uh, safety is a massive public policy. The law requires safety. In California, every employer is required to provide a safe place to work, and this is important, it's not just physical safety, it's psychological safety as well. So if you're working in a place and you're afraid that your coworker is going to try and kill you or harass you, that employment context is now in violation of the law. And the most important thing you can do when your workplace is unsafe, maybe you're a truck driver and they won't give you the right tires or the right tie downs, maybe you're a technician in a hospital and they won't give you the right equipment to deliver care safely, whatever it is, the most important thing to do is to document your safety concerns in a report to your leaders. If someone has a case for wrongful termination, what is the main thing that you or any other attorney is going to be trying to prove? The most important fact in any wrongful termination case is motive. Why did they do this? Why did they decide to do what they did? Nothing else matters. Because if you can't prove the why it happened, then you can't win at trial. If you don't have the evidence for a jury to say, I think it happened because, then you can't win. So a lot of times people will consult with an attorney and they'll say, I think it was wrong. And then you'll ask, well, why? I mean, what, what, why do you think they did this to you? And if the answer is, I don't know, 
Like, I don't suspect age. I don't suspect gender. I, I just, I don't know. If you don't even have a sense of why, then you really don't have a case. Uh, it could be unfair, but if you don't know why it happened to you, and you don't even have a, a theory or a speculation, um, maybe it happened because you're a race and you were the only one uh, of that race. But you have to have some explanation as to why you think the illegal reason is the real reason that it happened to you. So if somebody successfully proves to a jury that they were wrongfully terminated, what kind of monetary damages can they recover? Well, if somebody can prove that they were unlawfully terminated, then uh, the jury and the court, they are allowed to provide that person all the damages to make up for all of the harm that was caused by the unlawful act. So this would include things, obvious things, like your loss of salary and benefits, both in the past and if it's going to be a future loss. Let's say now that they've accused you of, uh, of doing something illegal and firing you falsely, it's going to be hard to find a new job. Some people may never work again uh, because no employer is going to want to roll the dice and hire somebody who's, who's suing their old employer and accused of doing something uh, terrible or illegal. That's just a very difficult situation. So uh, the court allows that person to recover the past wage loss as well as wage loss that the jury or the court believes will happen into the future. And then in addition to that, you're entitled to recover damages for uh, your emotional distress, the injury to your reputation, uh, essentially anything that's not economic. So the hard feelings, the, the depression, anxiety, panic attacks, all of that gets lumped into a bucket called general damages. And these general damages are non-economic damages, meaning not money, not lost earnings, but money for the uh, the problems and the troubles that they've put a person through emotionally. In addition to that, a jury can also award punitive damages. And this is a, an award that is intended to make the defendant change its behavior and to hold it accountable for the despicable and reprehensible acts that they've perpetrated on a plaintiff. Without giving us any names, could you please give us an example of a wrongful termination case that the Ball Hall Group handled some details of the case and the litigation and the ultimate result. We handle the case for a chief of child psychiatry in the San Jose area who is working for one of the largest uh, public health systems in California. And uh, as the chief of uh, pediatric psychiatry, so he's in charge of all of the other uh, psychiatrists who are helping the children in this county. And he was reporting that the county was actually turning people away, turning children away, turning their families away when they would come seeking emergency medical treatment for a young child who might be suicidal, a young child who is having delusions and is a danger to himself or others. And the county was turning these people away. And our client bravely stood up to that and was trying to call out attention to the fact that the county's mental health care system for minors was broken. And instead of fixing this, instead of fixing the problem, instead they stripped him of his chief status, they stripped him of his ability to see patients, and then they falsely accused him, the very person who was saying that we need to help these kids, they falsely accused him of turning away a child in need instead of providing that service when the only reason that he did not see that child is because he was still working with another child. But the county wanted him to see these children within a, a limited window of 30 minutes, even though it took usually an hour to an hour and a half to coordinate pediatric psychiatric care because you need to talk to the child, you need to talk to the parents, it takes a long time. And there is this fight right now between the brave doctors and healthcare providers who know what needs to be done and these healthcare administrators who only care about dollars and only care about getting us in and out of these appointments like cattle. And he stood up for that 
and then he was fired out of his position for completely bogus reasons. And we brought those reasons to court in Contra Costa County, and we had a multiple week trial. And the jury was blown away when they saw how much evidence there was. And all of these doctors came in and testified that the county had been pushing, pushing, pushing medical care to be compromised to minors. The jury saw it. They awarded him seven figure compensation. And then after the verdict, the county, the health system settled with this doctor uh, for what can only be described as an extremely favorable and reasonable amount. How long does a typical wrongful termination case take? A typical wrongful termination case, and, and this really will depend on where your case is. So that you gotta think of courts like, uh, like restaurants, okay? Some courts, are, are like great restaurants. They take your reservation, they get you at your table, they get you your meal, and you're out of there in you know, an hour or an hour and a half, uh, and you're very happy with the experience. Other courts, unfortunately, they don't have the resources to be like that excellent restaurant. They don't have the waiters, they don't have the chefs, so, and they can't take a reservation, and so you may find yourself showing up for your meal and the food doesn't come out for five hours and you end up just having to wait. And that's what it's like. I mean, some of the counties, unfortunately, don't have the resources and so cases can take four or five years. Five years is supposed to be the maximum, but the reality is if you want your justice, sometimes the courts even have to go beyond five years. So uh, the, the, it's the simple answer is on a best case scenario, a year and a half to two years, in a worst case scenario, five and a half to seven.